Hello and welcome to the sickest politics podcast in the UK. <laughs> and that is sick, not in the early 2010s colloquial term, just the most medically ill podcast. We have both my And that colds. is a fact. That's not a fact in the slightest. Tell we both me. Have small colds. Tell me that, like, an actual newspaper or something would have two people that sound <laughs> snuffly on yeah. a podcast together. Yeah, we weren't here last week because we were setting up a new computer, which is what all this is running from. Um, so it should look slightly better, maybe even in 4K. Mm. That's exciting. Um, but we weren't here because that kind of knocked off our whole system. And our system is still quite knocked off. And I was off. on holiday. Uh, and Ben was on holiday and Zach was on holiday. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, but we're back. Um, we're back. <laughs> not in best form. <laughs> we're not. But we are back and we're ready to, ready to do it all over again. So, some stuff's happened. Some stuff has happened, yeah. Beyond our illness, our setting up a new computer in your holiday. <laughs> How many times it's have hard you to mentioned believe. that throughout? I mean, if, if we'd got an excuse, we might as well use it. Yeah, Normally, fair. we don't have an excuse. Yeah. Let's start with the mini budget, then. Mini budget. Not Just that small, budget. right? No, quite quite significant. And, well, I was going to say, unfortunately, but it, is, it, was, a bit, it was a big one. Um, what was introduced during this mini budget then? What what made the mini budget bigger than we thought? So there's, this is so just to start with, um, it's a mini budget because <coughs> basically the chancellor didn't want presumably the amount of. I'm just going to power. Just through. go through it. Um, we told them we're ill. Yeah, the chancellor presumably just didn't want um, the scrutiny on that you would normally get from uh, independent financial uh, institutions. Yeah. Uh, which you would normally get with a full budget. So it, it's not mini in terms of substance. There was a lot that comes with it. Yeah. Um, it was it was Truss and uh, Quateng's first chance to so sort of mini, outline... Mini is a misleading term from the beginning then. It's well, just it's, a less yeah. regulated budget. It's a less regulated budget. It's still, I would say, it's more significant. Well, it's more significant in the sense that the amount of tax cuts, it's the most, it's the largest tax cut since the 1972 Anthony Barber yeah. uh, budget. Uh, which which is quite infamous for cutting tax. So it's cut a lot of mm. tax. So I'll just run through some of the sort of headline things from Go for from it. the. Well, I'm going to call it, from here on out. I'm calling it a budget. In You're scrapping the mini. In technical terms, it's not a budget. Yeah. But I'm annoyed that it's not because they just did it to sort of avoid the full scrutiny of a budget. Yeah. So I'm. It looks. I'm, I'm taking like a, a stand, Jack. Yeah, it's I'm a calling budget. it a budget from here on out. Big fan. So of in it. the budget, yeah, um, they cut uh, income tax to 19. percent yeah, uh, from, from 20. 20%. So it's only a 1% reduction. It's not huge, but that's something. Okay. Um, the government estimates that about 31 million people are going to get £170 more a year uh, from that. Yeah. Um, the 45% rate of tax for higher earners has been scrapped um, in England, Wales, Northern Ireland. That was people earning over £150,000 yes. a year. So there is now a one single higher rate of income tax of 40%. So which is anyone earning more than £50,000 is paying the same rate on everything yes. over £50,000. Irrespective of whether you earn £60,000 or £160,000. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, that, that, that's... Which leads to some weird scenarios where if you're a, like a graduate earning £50,000 oh, because we'll you've got that. The, all that stuff... You have some fun maths yes, in there. Let's not get ahead, Jack. Some entertaining tweets. Let's just, you know, we'll, we'll run oh. through. But you're right. It is. Thank it, you. There are some quite interesting uh, uh, sort of anomalies from this. Yeah. So, uh, Lister, we, we sort of knew that she'd do this based on the, the run-up to the... Um, to, to her accession to Prime Minister. Yeah. Um, she's going to reverse the recent um, rise in national insurance. Yeah. Um, so that's that's going to be undone. That was the national insurance rise that was supposed to pay for uh, health and the, social care. Correct. Yeah. So she's, she's got rid of that. So the Do we know if that money is still being spent? I, it's not clear. I haven't seen anything on this. Okay. So I don't think it's been made clear whether they... Rory knows. Off camera. They said they will commit to sustaining the level of funding as if it was still in place. Okay. Right. If you didn't so, hear that... So yes, they are going to... I'm just going to pretend that, that I know Yeah, this. just cut that out. <laughs> Rory's not sick. He's not allowed on the podcast. No, sick boys only. Yeah. Sick. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh, now we can't cut it. <laughs> Don't like that. Keep it in. Um, Scarlett, keep that in. So this was the tax rise that was meant to be covering the new commitment to health and social care. Yeah. Obviously, with that tax rise now scrapped... Yeah. Is the money still going to that? Because that's obviously an important issue for a lot of people. It's just the fact that I'm having to pretend that I know this and everybody in this room knows that I don't. And um, everyone watching. We've not edited any of this out. This is all still in. 
So, yeah, they are actually keeping the same level of funding. Yeah. The amount of tax revenue is going to be reduced because obviously, you know, they're cutting, cutting back. back. Yeah. Um, so they're going to have to do this through borrowing. But they are maintaining the the amount of money that will go to the to okay. sort of social care and the health service. So that's the second thing. You know, that's, that's you know, the, the national insurance, they're rowing back on that. Yeah. Corporation tax rise, you know, in line with that. Scrapped. Uh, scrapping that. That was meant to go what from 19... Scrap. 19 to 25%. Call the binman because we're throwing a lot out. Yeah, absolutely scrapping Put it. Put that on T-shirt. Um, so that's that's remaining at nineteen percent. Um, they're the sort of main ones. The only other big, the only other big one is stamp duty. Um, yeah. So there's going to be no stamp duty on the first two hundred fifty thousand um, pounds. So or yeah. four two five for yeah. first time buyers. Or four two five first stamp time duty buyers. being the tax you pay on house purchases. Um, actually, there's a couple of other things we sort of knew beforehand. So obviously, on, this maintains the so the energy policy. We spoke about this last week. So they're uh, fixing. Uh, the average household, what they're going to pay for energy bills, mm-hmm. two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. They've now estimated, we were, we were sort of speculating about this last week, they now estimate that that's going to cost about 60 billion pounds over the next six months. So just to put that into perspective, when we were talking <coughs> last year about um, the test and trace system, NHS mm-hmm. test and trace, and how much that cost, that was 37-ish billion pounds, yeah. which, is, which was a lot seen still. as an ungodly figure. Like hu- that is humongous. Arguably more wasted too, to but be fair. But sixty billion pounds yeah, going to energy so double. Unbelievable. Well, you know, I'm sure later we're going to talk about the impact from this budget. Yeah. And you know, just bear that sixty billion pound figure in mind because that alone is, is massive. M- yeah. Monstrous. Let alone guess. all the other tax receipts that are being reduced. She's also at least in theory, unless as we mentioned last week as well. She also um, scrapped well. I say she, he, Quasi Kwarteng did this. Yeah. Uh, bankers' bonuses. So yes. uh, the rules about the maximum amount that banks' bonuses we were discussing last week whether they'd just be increased or scrapped. They've been scrapped. Yeah. So uh, previously it was 100% of your uh, earnings or 200% with shareholder approval. Mm. You can have as a bonus. No longer the case. So that's the a lot. That's the budget. I'm still referring to it as a budget. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there. <laughs> so obviously, good news if you're a banker. Yes. Good news if you're about to buy your first home. Yeah. If you're just, I don't know, a sick little boy at home, does this help you? Who is this budget benefiting? Um, well, as part of the one percent, Jack, it uh, benefits you. You're gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna, you know, your third mansion. Well, gonna be. TLDR I'm Towers off, is expanding. Uh, Jack's very happy. Um, <laughs> On the plus side, Jack has gone, but on the plus side, there's going to be less coughing through the podcast. So, I'm back. Oh, he's back. Oh, dear. Um, so, basically, you are right. It benefits the rich, very much so. Um, I didn't say that. That sounds like a cynical <laughs> okay, thing fine. to say. I'll say that. It benefits, it very much benefits uh, the rich. I think the data's on your side there. The data, yeah, the data's very much on my side. Okay, so the... Uh, Resolution Foundation has actually done some analysis into this. It okay. is an independent think tank. So they reckon that London and the South East could gain an average of about £1,600. Okay. Per person? Uh, yes. Uh, households. So households. Household, okay. Um, due to f- Friday's, what they're calling a fiscal statement, what I'm calling budget. A budget. Um, this is about three times as much as those in Wales, uh, the North East and Yorkshire. Uh, wh- where they predict people will it'll only benefit households by about five hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, they also think that the poorest fifth of households will gain an average of ninety pounds. Uh, the middle fifth uh, losing about seven hundred eighty pounds, and the top five percent of earners gaining two thousand five hundred twenty. Losing twenty. Uh, yeah, the middle fifth losing seven hundred eighty pounds. How does that work? Uh, the Resolution Foundation thinks that they're going to lose seven hundred eighty pounds. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. That is, <laughs> that is my question answered. Yes. Um, you know, the bottom line here is that the, the rich are very much yes. benefiting from this. Low income people are very much not. Um, the, you know, the, the overall part of the budget, she mm-hmm. seemed to have announced, as, as we've just gone through, a lot of things that will benefit richer people. Yep. So there was very little support for... So when Boris Johnson was leaving office, there was yep. a lot of talk about the increase in energy prices. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some suggestion that this would be up to his successor yep. there was talk amongst journalists about some um, targeted support for low-income households there's none of that i know i know that they're fixing um uh, energy prices at two and a half thousand pounds but that's not through a windfall tax that's mm-hmm. increasing borrowing which is going to have to be paid off at some point which is on top of uh the pandemic borrowing uh test and trace obviously included yeah. in that 
Um, and there's no targeted support for low income families. So those that, are, that just, just, just to put into some perspective, at the beginning of this year, <coughs> energy bills were on average about 1,270 ish pounds yeah. um, for average households. You know, being fixed at two and a half thousand pounds is good. You know, that it's not going any higher than that. Mm -hmm. That is still double. You know, yeah. low income households are still really going to hurt from this. It's really going to be, be found difficult. You know, there's been Martin Lewis over the weekend who's been talking a lot about this. There's been the, the, um, Laura Koonsberg did a show. They had. Um, couple of economists and you know people mm -hmm. on there and they were talking on there about the fact that uh, the amount of people using uh, value brands at supermarkets sure. is going up those going to places like Lidl and Aldi mm -hmm. are going up there are families that are going to tills uh, at supermarkets with a number of things and saying getting to a point on the you know the conveyor yeah, and then saying, saying we're done that, that's where we do. yeah. I can't afford any more than that you know this is you know this yeah. is in you know 21st century Britain that this mm -hmm. is happening there was no targeted support for low-income families there was a lot of people really hurting at the minute and this budget seems to very much demonstrate who her government is on the side of um she's she's, she's made very clear early on that you know bankers bonuses can yeah. double now to put the the opposite side I was gonna of that, say now they would argue they would argue that this is for growth yes that this stimulates growth that this is needed you know, there is some evidence for that. There are some think tanks that think that this is the way to solve the current economic problems by encouraging growth. Yeah. But um, there's some sort of controversy over the weekend about think tanks that Liz Truss is aligned with yeah. uh, have thought this and that it's it's almost experimenting, that this isn't known that this is going to help and that they're turning Britain a little bit into a bit of a policy laboratory to see whether this is going to work. You know, only time will tell. Yeah. Um, some think tanks obviously think it, it could work, some, some don't. It's obviously an inherently political um, decision. You know, yeah. we're talking about almost traditional conservative low tax yeah. versus labour higher tax. There's, there's, I know I mentioned this last week, but uh, in the last few years, it seems that the Conservatives and Labour um, ideologically have become a little bit more similar. You know, David Cameron, social, <laughs> socially centrist, if not left. Boris Johnson has obviously uh, increased tax and spent quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the difference actually on ideological mm -hmm. terms has, has become maybe a little bit more narrower and they're widening again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting, it's an interesting budget and it, it certainly sets the tone for the Truss era. Yeah, and it's interestingly a lot less... Um a lot less populist than anything we would have seen out of yes. Johnson's government. This is actively, and I'm, I'll ask for your kind of take on this and what the reaction's been in a moment. But I mean, a lot of the reaction's been negative, even within conservative circles. And obviously on the left, they're not gonna like things that are blatantly hands out for already rich people. So this has been an actively unpopular policy. They're not shocked by that. They might be shocked by what's happened to the pound and like how unpopular it's been, mm. but they always knew this was gonna be unpopular versus a more Johnsonian policy, which would often have a real populist skew. So I guess there is something interesting there that this government, while it is following the footsteps of some of Johnson's kind of strategies and some of his like rhetoric and his attitude towards the civil service and all those things, there's other areas in which they're acting really differently. And this is something that I think Johnson would have been far too scared to ever execute, rightly or wrongly. That might be a good thing that he would have never done this. But yeah, Trust clearly isn't scared of people saying, you just are out for rich people because she's basically saying, yeah. Well, there's a couple of yeah, things that's here. that's what the graphs say. Well, yeah, exactly. There's a couple of things here. I think firstly, it's that, and I feel like I'm going to be saying this quite a lot on this podcast, which is that Truss has very much made clear when she's running uh, in the Conservative Party leadership election that she is a right-leaning figure. That's yeah. why she won. Um, there's a lot of members of parliament that sort of expected her to do some quite right-wing things in con in contrast to Johnson, who was a lot more populist. Um, so she's a lot more ideological and ideologically right-wing. So uh, there's, there's a point to be made that, you know, we shouldn't be too surprised no. that she, she went down this line. I think why people are surprised is, firstly, how quickly she's done it. Yeah. And secondly, just how much there is, you know, how, how, how quickly and how much she's cut tax yeah. so early. I mean, there is an argument as well from her, <coughs> her perspective that she's sort of reducing the tax burden to pre-pandemic levels. Mm -hmm. So Johnson's government sort of increased tax in the wake of the pandemic, you know, the, yes. the social care yeah. levy, the national insurance rise was very much an attempt to, to readdress the balance. You know, there's a couple of other things as well. Um, so, the, But the, I mean, the, those things were introduced to handle the costs of the pandemic, the knock-on effects of the NHS, all of those things. That's why they raised corporation tax, which I imagine is something Rishi Sunak wouldn't have wanted to do, especially so drastically. 19 to 25% is a big leap. 
and those were designed to solve specific issues that the Johnson government identified and thought needed that funding. Mm. And they were already borrowing a lot of money. And then Truss's government come in, none of those problems are even slightly solved. I mean, a lot of these things are being rowed back never even came into force. Corporation tax never did. National insurance barely did. And they're already being taken back. Well, and that funding is either being scrapped or being replaced by... Well, this, this comes back to what I said. I mean, obviously, they'll argue growth, whatever, but... It's a different fiscal strategy. Yes, totally different. And she, you know, um, as, as we've said before, her argument would be that, that this is the way to do it because yeah. this would encourage growth and grow the economy, which is mm -hmm. what's required. Um, you know, the, the critics of her would say that it means that um, borrowing money in the future is going to be more difficult, yeah. that we're going to spend a long time paying this off, um, <coughs> that it's not helping low-income families. You know, there are criticisms of this, but her argument would be that this is what's required to grow the economy, which mm -hmm. is ultimately what is uh, required at the minute. Um, so again, th that that is her, her, her policy. And I suppose making comparisons like that while useful, it, it, you know, it's important to bear in mind that, that it's a completely different strategy. Yes. It's a completely different way oh, yeah. of thinking about a problem. She's she's trying to go for a different solution mm -hmm. um, to, to this problem, which is why it's been such a turn of a, a change of course. It's also going to be a difficult strategy, I think, electorally in a few years time, because tax cuts are obviously popular, but these tax cuts are so targeted towards the wealthy that just the proportion of the country that care versus the proportion of the country are more annoyed by it, if anything. These tax cuts won't help her. Well, they can't make the argument of label, borrow a bunch of money, magic money tree, because they're doing exactly <laughs> the same thing. And also they can't make the argument of we're spending on stuff because they're not. So they kind of, all of the core economic yeah. arguments you can make, no matter whether you're coming from the left or the right, you need to lock onto one of those three. We'll cut your tax, we'll increase spending, we won't borrow too much. And they're kind of failing on all three. Now, as you say, they'd argue this is part of the grand strategy, but 2024 is not that long away. No. It's hard to imagine that the grand economic turnaround is really going to show up in that time period. If anything, with global trends, it's really going to get worse. Even if their strategy is a good idea, in the medium term, short to medium, you're not going to see the returns of that. So it'll be interesting to see kind of the reaction now versus the reaction in 24, because I think right now it's hard to see how they could argue it do you want to go a little bit into the reaction more generally to yeah i mean well there's there's there's, there's two things just on that point which sort of answer the question about the reaction yeah. so the, the first thing is to do with polling post budget you know when yeah. we were in, in the johnson um government labor were ahead by uh, at times about 10 or 11 percent yeah which was pretty good you know yeah. double digits that's a pretty healthy lead for not labor. insurmountable for Tories. No, Often not at the all. incumbent will be behind, but good for Labour, certainly. So there was sort of anticipation that there'd be maybe be a bump yeah. um, with Liz Truss. Uh, the lead of Labour now is about 23%. Okay, so I actually read a bit of an error here. Um, it's not a 23-point lead across the UK. That was specifically in Wales. So it's actually a 12-point lead across the whole of the UK, which gives them, uh, you know, if you work out from those numbers, a 56-seat uh, lead in Westminster. So it's not a 23 point lead to 12 point lead but the point remains the same that Labour are very far ahead in the polls at the minute so Labour are on about 46 percent <coughs> the Tories are on about 23 percent which isn't good uh, and if you translate that into seat majority they reckon it's about 59 or uh, in the 50 seat majority I can't remember the exact yeah. figure but it's in the 50s uh 50 seat majority which is which again is a healthy lead yeah for definitely Labour. so you know as you say this I I would argue probably will make 24 quite a, a difficult thing for trust especially because the perception amongst the public uh, the reaction among mm. journalists and things like that has very much been that this looks to be a budget for yeah. the wealthy it's bad messaging if nothing else well the, the communication strategy as well on it is it has not been good it was not communicated no. you know very well at all that this is a, a budget that, that is aiming to increase growth this mm -hmm. is necessary for the country etc etc seems to have sort of been announced and because it was on a friday we've then had the yeah. weekend and there hasn't really been much of the government actively taking like a proactive approach yeah. to try because if you were the government at the minute making this you, you, surely the last thing you want is for this to be perceived as a mm -hmm. budget for the wealthy you need this to be perceived as this is necessary yeah. for us to address the financial yeah. uh, concerns of the country. So you'd want as many ministers going out as possible to go, no, I'm, I understand why this looks as if it's yeah. for the wealthy, but this is required. If you genuinely believe that it's yeah. required, you, you, that, that, that is basically what's required. And there's just none of that. The communication strategy has not been good on this. And uh, admittedly, it's hard to get an economic message across any time. Economics is kind of a complicated topic. Yeah. It's harder than other things to communicate with the public. But even with things like austerity, which is kind of a similar-ish message 
I mean, obviously the opposite direction, one's giving money to rich people, one's taking away kind of kind of benefits and kind of the core things that poorer people rely on. Um, but even still, it was a broadly unpopular policy, but there was a clear messaging around it about this is the sensible thing to do. This is the prudent thing to do. This isn't going to be fun, but we need to take our medicine. Like, this is how we need to, like, improve. Mm. And sure, I mean, austerity still isn't popular and never really was. But at least there was a clear strategy around that, around we're not the fun party right now, but we're being sensible with the adults. And it's it's not going down that way. I mean, you can, if, if anything, it looks kind of reckless. Yeah. And especially in, when, uh, can, like when you're putting it right next to things like the banker's bonuses stuff, it does just look a bit like a big old party for a certain class of people. And as everyone else is struggling, whether that's, whether that's true, whether that's an accurate representation or not, if that's what people are seeing. Just, just obviously trying to play devil's advocate slightly. Um, I suppose their argument with bankers' bonuses would be that you need to encourage certain uh, people to remain in the country, to yes. come to the country, to pay tax Which in the is country. Fair. So allowing them to, <coughs> to have higher earnings than maybe some other countries yeah. would allow them would encourage them here, which means they'd pay more tax here and in, in the grand scheme of things. So that, that, that would be potentially their argument on that. I mean, it's interesting as well, just going back to your point on the Conservatives' uh, g- just generic ideology. Yeah. There's a, quite a good uh, joke on Have I Got News for You on Friday, which was that um, L- Labour are very much seen as sort of the, the uh, tax and spend party. Yeah. Uh, you know, th- th- they have high taxes mm-hmm. um, and, and they also spend. The Conservatives seem to be doing sort of the opposite of that in the sense that they, they are... Well, not not even the, the full opposite. That they're spending, yeah. but they're not taxing. It's low yeah. tax, high, high spend, spend. Yeah. which is just it's almost a you know some would view that as sort of a fantasy sort of like, which is what they've been accusing Labour of for the last well, exactly. 12, 15 years. So it's a it's it was it's a weird situation. It's a weird start to the uh, uh, Truss's sort of premiership. And even on the banking thing, I think the the argument I agree. The argument to be made is around keeping people in the UK, attracting people to the UK. Also, it's a fair argument to make bankers are almost a completely unique exception of a time when the government limits bonuses and like pay structures that almost never happens elsewhere. So there is an argument to be made. Why are we regulating this? This is just a remnant of EU rules from post 2008 and it should be got away with. But that's almost a better argument than anything they've ever said. Like I've heard a few people saying that, but not really the government saying no, that. Well, this is commentators exactly have made this argument, but that's a great line. Yeah. Going up, going after these things as benefits of Brexit, even if it doesn't help you, even if like as an individual, this isn't helping you and it's making things worse for you, like making it, attaching it to Brexit for a certain segment of the electorate, that is a good, that will convince people. Which is again, another interesting point because over the weekend, it's been suggested that Liz Truss might try and relax immigration rules to the UK to try and encourage foreign nationals to come work here because they've realized that they, they need uh, lower skilled yeah. workers in s- things like the service sector, mm-hmm. um, which obviously is kind of the opposite of what a lot of people thought Brexit was yeah. for. So you'd think that if that's being speculated over the weekend, you try and then spin yeah. a, anything uh, else anything else yeah. to be a benefit of Brexit. For example, bankers' bonuses, this was an EU-imposed thing. We can grow the economy by yeah. getting rid of this bureaucratic EU rule. You know, And we and can that would differentiate, ban- ourse- differentiate ourselves yeah. from Europe, from Frankfurt, from wherever exactly. else. Like, but yeah. she's not, not done that. So the communication strategy has been a mess. And talking about that, I feel like there's the um, uh, Fulbrook uh, yes. story. Let's move on. You know, talking about bad communication yes. strategies. What has been happening here? Give so, us a so, rundown. So Mark Fulbrook is the, um, uh, like the, he's a, a close aide to uh, Liz <coughs> Truss. He's uh, the chief of staff. Yep. So th- th- that's very a big, important position. Very, very important position in Downing Street. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you remember, Boris Johnson's premiership ended because there was a lot of scandals mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, accusations that there were sort of slimy, backhanded dealings. That And when they came out, Johnson often didn't either lied about them yeah. uh, and didn't handle them well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, basically a lot of scandal, a lot of sleaze. So, um, Fulbrook is the chief of staff, Mm -hmm. but he's not actually on government payroll. So, he's still on payroll for his own uh, lobbying firm called Fulbrook Strategies. Sure. Which was set up in March. Now, the website currently displays a message that says that uh, Fulbrook Strategies has currently suspended its commercial activities. Mm -hmm. But he's still being paid from the lobbying firm. There's been some suggestion (coughs) that this is the case so that he can avoid tax, so he doesn't have to tax his income. Now, obviously, Downing Street has denied that. 
you know, but it's an incredibly strange situation that the chief of staff is not being yeah. paid through the civil service nor the government, but through a lobbying firm. Yeah. Now, this is particularly difficult for Liz Truss because her predecessor was ousted because of scandals mm -hmm. about tax, about, you know, uh, the, obviously the last scandal was to do with a, a particularly sleaze and you know some awful accusations yeah. about a particular member of government that he allowed to remain a member mm -hmm. but throughout the course of his premiership yeah. there was a number of different scandals that sort of built up and the fact that in the first proper week of a premiership after the morning period she's already got a uh, an, a, a scandal about um, possibly one of her chief advisors avoiding tax yeah. and the fact that as uh, at the time of recording, nothing's changed on this. He remains in that position. He remains being paid from, through his own yeah. firm, Fullbook Strategies. Um, you know, it's it's she's not taking a proactive approach to this which, in the same way that Johnson didn't. Yeah, which uh, having just seen her predecessor fall, you'd think exactly she'd be more same proactive same, yes. about it. Um, so obviously, she hasn't been. no. Obviously, both of these things look bad for Truss. Yes. She's not been in office all that long. No days. Yeah. Um, there are reports already that MPs are submitting less of no confidence. Now, admittedly, there were reports on day one that people had already submitted less of no confidence. Um, so maybe a certain pinch of salt, maybe whatever. There was mm. uh, She was never popular with the majority of Tory MPs, so she always had an uphill battle. But yeah, the reports over the last couple of days that following the budget, following this scandal, following what's happened to the pound that we've not even got into in this video, mm. um, in this podcast, sorry, um, that following those three things there's already these less of no confidence going in. What do you make of that generally? Do you think that's something that trust ought to be concerned about? And more specifically, do you think that any of these scandals have contributed to that and could potentially contribute to a wider downfall? Yes, there's a lot here. Um, yeah. f firstly, I think... Um, it, <laughs> I know that this is a bit of a cop-out, but it all kind of depends on the number of no confidence letters as to whether she should be worried. And as... As is the nature of no confidence letters, we don't we know don't how know. many are in. Yeah. Um, so there's been a suggestion this morning. I, I, I've seen that Sky News has suggested that that an MP mm -hmm. has sent in a no confidence letter. If it is an yeah. MP, that shouldn't not be worried much. at all. Yeah. Like that's nothing. Um, the obviously the concern is, and I know that we keep going back to this, but it's really important that she represents a narrow wing of yes. the Conservative Party, a right wing faction. Now. There's a large part of the Conservative Party that don't subscribe to those economics, that don't subscribe to that way of government, yeah. and that are frustrated with the way that she started a premiership. Now, this could be an indication that the centrist wing, or even the centre-right wing of the Conservative Party, mm -hmm. are already to start, have started growing weary yeah. of Truss's economics, her way of running government. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that the budget has probably pay, played a very large role yes. in that, possibly the full book story as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that <coughs> it sort of indicates to her that she needs to depart from sort of the, the, the Johnson scandal era because yeah. Johnson was ended by scandal. Yeah. Um, it's a bit too soon, I'd say, to suggest whether this is, you know, the, 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 this is enough to end her premiership. So whether she would need It would be to, wild. Like, there's yes. no way it's over yet. But No, of course not. I mean, the MP said, and I just, you know, they told Sky News about this. We don't know what who the MP is, but mm -hmm. they said uh, the, the, the accused Treasury ministers of playing A level politic, uh, A level economics with uh, people's lives. And they added that the issue of government fiscal policy is opposite to Bank of England monetary policy. So they're fighting each other. Yeah. What quasi gives, the bank takes away. You cannot have monetary policy and fiscal policy at loggerheads. So it seems yeah. that their opposition is to do with her fiscal policy and that being at uh, loggerheads with, with monetary policy. So perhaps, you know, th that could be all. The point with all of this is that it's a bit too soon to tell. Yeah. It all depends on whether this is uh, this opinion is... Uh, representative of a yes. wider Conservative Party. But we've known from the start that she represents a narrow wing of the Conservative Party yeah. who, by all accounts this weekend, seem very happy with her, seem very happy with her fiscal policy and all that. Yeah. I'm sure they are because she's doing what right, they She's doing right-wing politics, which yeah. is kind of what we expected, or we should have expected. We just didn't expect it this quickly and this hard. Yeah. Um, so they're happy. It's just whether she can maintain the centre, you know, the centre and centre-right of the party. And, you know, it's I think it's a bit too, too soon to tell. Yeah, it feels even if they're very unhappy, it would be crazy to throw away their leader. Yeah, and that I, would she'd have like, to. They're, yes. they're co surely concerned by all of this. They surely don't like what it looks like. They're concerned about 2024. They're concerned about their constituencies, whatever else. But they also know that if they threw her out now, 
like there's concern and then there's securing your fate like mm. if they were to throw out another leader no matter who the new leader yeah. is that is pretty that much is nailing the coffin for 2024 yeah. like that that's enough to kill them so yeah. i guess even if they don't like it they're gonna have to really not like I it. i think people are really i think to be fair tory mps are surely quite rattled yeah. by a 23 point lead from Labour. oh and rightly so i think yeah I mean, that that is that is scary leap yeah. for them um so th th that's probably, probably <coughs> not great if she can't recover from, I, th I think in the next few months honestly in the next few months if you can't recover that polling and if if she continues with this this right really right-wing monetary policy mm -hmm. And it continues to... Especially in the face of cost of living. If that continues exactly. to get worse as expected. At the same time that their polling's getting bad. Yeah. I think then she really, really should start worrying. But we'll it's very soon. That it's could be a very, real very trust soon. issue. That, yeah, trust has issues, yes. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Yeah. I need to go and uh, have a lem sip or something. I need to blow my nose. <laughs> um, from these two sick little <laughs> children... I say good night. Goodbye. That is an awful ending. They're always bad. Yeah.